please be seated.
before you the king in all authority the one who reigns supreme the one when he says yes no man can say no the one who is God all by himself the one who reigns and rules without a single advisor the one who is in charge of the whole universe father we are before you this morning and we say thank you for the privilege to gather lord speak to us at this moment grant us lord understanding let our hearts be opened unto you to receive your word and lord we pray that we'll run with your word we pray you help us to obey your word so that it shall be well with us as a nation as a state as a people thank you for hearing us i hide myself behind the cross and let your voice be heard and not mine in jesus name we have prayed can i hear a better amen When I look around, I see how this place is, you know, you are looking very wonderful. I don't know if you look from where I am, whether from the chancel, just look out and see how wonderfully dressed and how God has beautified you and what God has made out of you. We have no choice, we have no other thing than to say to him, thank you. Can you just give the Lord a resounding clap of ring? And appreciate him for what this God has done. If not for anything, for choosing you as part of this profession and this ministry of being a legal officer. Please turn with me quickly to where we read the only lesson in Romans chapter 12. Sorry, Romans chapter 13, sorry. Romans chapter 13. And I will read from the New Living Translation. I'll read from verse 1 to 5. Just follow me. I know it says homily, so it should be very short. So I don't want it to be long, and I will try to make it very short. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. For all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right. Please take note of this, this, this particular scripture we are reading this morning but in those who are doing wrong would you like to live without fear of the authorities that's a question Paul was asking do what is right and they will honor you the authorities are God's servants sent for your good but if you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid. For they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. This is the word of the Lord. The letter to the Romans was uttered by Apostle Paul, an intelligent, articulate, and skilled lawyer like you seated here today, to those in the bar and those in the bench. He was committed to his calling and presented the gospel clearly and forthrightly to the believers in Rome. Paul had heard of the 
church at Rome, but he had never been there. The church was founded by the Jews who had come to faith during the Pentecost, as was recorded in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The spread of the faith continued as they returned after having the Pentecost experience, as they returned from Jerusalem. They were coming back. They keep spreading the faith. They had an experience that they were sharing what God has done in their lives. And they came back and this church was established. And this church began to grow. Paul felt a bond with them. As brothers and sisters in Christ, he longed to see them face to face. So he sent this letter to introduce himself and to make clear declarations of his faith. Beloved, in chapter 13, where we took our lesson, the only lesson in this service, and that was read to us by the chief judge of our state. Paul addressed the issue of submission to authority. This includes both Christian and the secular authority. Paul established the fact that authority comes from God. And God is the one who places them in the position of authority. So no one can be in leadership position without heaven's approval. Let me say to you, whether you like it or not, the Bible says that nobody, all authorities, it says everyone must submit. And it said that all authorities come from God. So he established the fact that those in authority are there by God's permission. God has allowed them to be there. And nobody can be there without God's approval. No wonder some persons have tried and tried and tried and they have failed. Because you can't be there when God has not approved. And let me also say this. If you try to work it out yourself, you will see the other side of it. Because some people try to work their way into it. Number two. I also want to establish this. Everyone must submit to governing authority. This is some persons. It's not a matter of choice. It's a command. Everybody must submit to governing authority. And let me say this as I continue. It does not matter how old the person in authority is. It does not matter his educational qualification. It does not matter whether you like his face or not. Those are immaterial. The Bible says you must do what? Submit. That's the scriptures. And there are scriptures that is not something you know, you don't negotiate. You must have to obey. So it is our duty to obey those in authority. Number three, Paul also went ahead to say, anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against God. Brethren, do you see how dangerous it will be when you rebel against constituted authority? Because God has put them there. So if you are working against them, sorry for you. You are kicking against the bricks and you're, you have to get a very serious injury. Am I talking to somebody here at all? That is the, I'm talking about the scriptures. I'm not talking about my words. This is what is written in the scriptures. You say anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against God. And the person will be punished. So if you are working against considered authority, you are working against authority, then get ready for your due punishment at due time. It might not come immediately. Eh? It might not come immediately. But it will surely come. Number four. Those in authority do not strike fear. They do not put fear. Into those who are doing good. If you are somebody who is behaving well. You obey authority. You are a law abiding citizen. You don't need to be afraid. The, the leaders also will not 
you know, put fear into you. They will not put terror. They will not hold terror against you. But they will do that against those who do wrong. Paul is established all these facts. And he says, those who do right. Look at what Paul is saying. For those who do right will be honored. Any man who obeys authority, any man who works for the good of authority will be commended, will be appreciated, will be rewarded. That's what Paul is saying. And in verse 4b, he said, those who do wrong should be afraid because those who are in authority will punish them. I'm trying to establish what we draw from this scripture. Beloved, today we are here to rededicate ourselves, especially our brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers who are in the legal profession. You have come here today to rededicate yourselves. The only profession that is known and addressed, they are addressed as learned people, is only this profession. They are the, you are the only learned ones. Others did not go to school. The, those who are addressed as learned, that is what is said here now. People like us are ignoramus. So, you see the position you occupy. And let me also remind you that you have been trained as ministers in the temple of justice to stand for the truth. The court, they say, should be the hope of the common man. That brings me to the topic I'm just sharing with us this, this morning. Called to uphold justice. That is what you are called to do. This profession is a calling. It's a calling. And God has called you because it has to do with justice and equity. It has to do with righteousness. So when we talk about justice, what are we talking about? We're talking about maintaining or, ad or administration of what is just, especially by the impartial adjustment of conflicting claims or the assignment of merited reward or punishment. You should know better than me. Please, if I make a mistake, don't hold it, don't hold it against me because you are the learned ones that should tell me. When we talk about justice, we're talking about fairness. We're talking about impartiality. We're talking about non-partisanship. We're talking about equity. We're talking about neutrality. And we're talking about non-partisanship. We're talking about free from party affiliation. That is what you are called to do. This profession. To stand in the path of justice, of equity. Being impartial, speaking the truth without fear nor favor. But beloved, what do we see today? What can we say about the justice system in Nigeria, in our dear country? Beloved, for me, we could say that what we see today is that the more you look, the less you see. Truth be told. If I stand on this elevated pulpit to condemn every lawyer or every judge, then I am a liar. We have people who are sincere. The midst of the terrible ones, we still have the remnants who are still standing for truth. I'm sure they are here. Those who have said, we'll stand for justice, we'll stand for righteousness, we'll stand for equity. It does not matter whose heart is God, we'll stand to declare the truth. They are here. They are also all over Nigeria. So it's not everybody. But I want to say to us that what we see today is so disheartening, is so discouraging that this wonderful profession, people who are called into this wonderful profession, today a good number of them are adding to the problem of Nigeria. They are adding to the problem of this country. They are adding to the problem of our states. They are causing disaster in this country. And let me say something to you. I want to read the scripture. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Please put it up there. So that everybody will see it. I want to read it quickly. Put it up. Media. Isaiah 5 20. What does it say? What 
sorrow for those who say which translation is this please no put King James version no I want this one in King James NIV what has it down King James put it well say woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter I have a question for you seated here today are you calling light darkness and calling darkness light are you calling bitter things sweet because of brown envelope and very big alert when you, you, you receive it bang, bang, in, your, in your phone your, your, your phone will vibrate your bank will shake your bank account will shake then because of that you will now pervert justice it is only in Nigeria I stand to be corrected it's only in this country we are caught of the same coordinate jurisdiction deliver conflicting judgment it's only in this country I stand to be corrected it's only in this country that good people are hiding and the evil people are strolling very free in this country the wicked men are given titles celebrated why the good ones nobody makes mention of them I stand to be corrected it is only in this country well you can quote others I'm saying what are what we are seeing that even when you have evidence and you go to court and produce all your evidence they, those some of them I'm not saying everybody they are blind to evidence these days they don't see they deliver whatever they want to deliver because something has water has gone under the bridge I won't blame you it did not start today it happened even in the scriptures but there are consequences do you know that Jesus was condemned even when evidence that we are brought against him were false? Huh? Is it true? Jesus was arrested, accused. At the point, all the accusers, they could not make anything out of the evidence. Even at that, they say he will still die. He must die. Pilate, after interrogating him, said, I find no fault in this man. But the people say crucify him and the bible says for that reason in luke chapter 23 verse 12 that jesus because of the death of jesus pilate and herod become, became friends eh? did you hear what, what i said now pilate and who they became what they have been having wrong very serious running battle they've been enemies but because of Jesus, they want jesus to die they reconciled and they killed him in can you put up chapter 23 of Luke verse 23 and 24 for me please Luke 23 23 and 24 look at what happened the drama that happened there see, and they were instant with loud voices requiring that they, he might be crucified who are they talking about Jesus and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Look at verse 24. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. What was that? Barabbas should be what? Release. A man who is a, a murderer, a man who caused trouble in the community. They say, and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison when they had desired but he delivered Jesus to their what? Jesus should be killed and I want to ask you the question how many innocent people have you condemned? how many evil people have you gone to stand for in cases? these things we do for conscience sake that you are a lawyer does not mean you should lose your sense let me say this you will give account of what you are doing whether you like it or not you sit in 
judgment before you give judgment you condemn people and but what you are condemning people you are even a chief in it god is waiting for you the bible says a day is coming it's a day of reckoning all men shall stand before the throne of god and give account of themselves you give account of your stewardship so what you are doing here is just a, you are just doing a rehearsal the real church is coming this country can be better if the judges and the lawyers we have in this country will sit up and stand their ground and say no to injustice and say instead of me to do this I can die for it some of you are afraid of dying me I'm not afraid that's why I can speak the truth if I finish here take me outside shoot me no problem but I will tell you the truth and I pray that God will raise men and women who will stand in this nation Nigeria is somersaulting Nigeria is somersaulting Nigeria Nigeria is in comatose and we need men and women that will stand it does not matter for conscience sake and say I will not do this I will not sell my conscience because of money what will hundred billion it will solve all your problems yes you can be put it to your family to your children but do you know the money you get ill-gotten money is a cause if you get money in a very wrong way you are in trouble it will haunt you if you use it to train your children they will not be useful ah, am i too hard am i too hard <laughs> if you use it to train your children they will not be useful you can't use a stolen money to train your children and think they will turn out well. It's not possible. The God we serve is a God of justice. That's the dangerous thing that you must understand. I pray that you will stand for justice. As we rededicate ourselves today, make a new commitment to uphold justice and truth. No matter what it will cost you. Say no to evil. Our country is almost sinking. You can make it right. One of the things you must do in this service, make peace with God if you know you have gone astray. Number two, seek help from him every day before you go to court. Kneel, even when you get there, say, God, help me. I want to do your bidding, not the bidding of men. He will help you. I don't want to rule out the fact that there are terrible people, even in the midst. I'm not afraid to say because you can't do me anything. Your charm will not work. Will I belong to any court? It's not my business. I stand on the rock that can never rule. His power is imperial power. His power is the total power. His power is the ultimate power. So no witch, no wizard, no demon, no incantation, no invocation, no enchantment against me. We stand. And that's why every child of God. Whether you belong to Obuni or Freemasonry or whatever. And that's how when your members come to your court, you will turn judgment upside down because they belong in the same place with you. God will arise and judge when the time comes. Kai Masukata Libra Osokopoli and Dalagadosha Lipa Katayagados Improkoto Satu in Katayagados. They will judge. You cannot go scot free. If you like believe in God, don't believe in God. The word of God is the word of God. It cannot be changed by anybody. Ask God to help you. Refuse the temptation of selling your soul to the devil. Some of you have sold your soul to the devil. Your soul has been sold. You have sold it. Some of you have already, you are already dead. They have buried you. They just exist. But you have sold your soul to the devil. Refuse temptation to yield yourself to the devil. Then finally, as we pray, be contented with what you have. Godliness with contentment is great gain. If you are contented, nobody, no matter what they bring before you, you will say no. If your car is a rickety car, 
It's better to drive that ticket than to be in limousine. And then hell is waiting for you. I pray that this God, who is the all-knowing, this God who is a merciful God, who has brought all of us together today in this rededication service, will touch every heart here. And will cause us to yield ourselves to him so that he will use us. May the devil not make you an instrument. Yield yourself to God that he will use you. Rise up to your feet as we pray. Close your eyes, everybody. This is the house of God and the presence of God is here. The best thing that can happen to anybody is to reconcile yourself back to God. And I pray for you this morning that you will draw closer to God. If you draw closer to him, he will draw closer to you. There is nothing in this life. Nothing. The one who owns your life knows when to stop it. That is why you must work to please him so that he will reward you handsomely. Close your eyes of the Lord. Father, I pray is your children. And I ask that you will help them. You have called them to a sensitive profession. This ministry of justice. And Lord, we pray that each and every one of them here will have a retain. By the reason of your word, you have called them Lord, to stand in the path of righteousness. Take away fear from them. No matter the intimidation, no matter the harassment. Father, make them understand that one with you is in the majority. It does not matter how many they are out there. But Lord, all they need is to be at peace with you. Bless them. Strengthen them. It's not easy. Sometimes the pressure will be mounted. But Lord, help them to stand their ground. Bless and keep them strong. Some of them here might be sick. Or might have one challenge or the other. Lord, by the reason of this rededication service, heal somebody in this service. Meet somebody at the point of his or her needs. Lord, give them testimonies. Let them